are you looking for a powerful, fully upgraded tier one deck that's also a joy to pilot, uses some of the best, most powerful blue and red cards in the entire game, and only costs about $50? Then have I got a deck for you. Is it Blitz? Oh yes, it is. It is. The popper format isn't just affordable, it has a plethora of decks to choose from, but out of all of them, one of my absolute favorites is Is It Blitz? Yes, it is. Let's take a look. But before we begin, remember, Popper isn't just for Magic Online leagues anymore. The end of the month is fast approaching, and that means the time has come, once again, for another high-stakes Popper tournament at Mox Boarding House Seattle. If you are in the Seattle area, come play an awesome Eternal format where the decks won't cost you a month's rent. Check out more information in the links in this video description, and even if you are not in the Seattle area, maybe this will give you some ideas is to suggest to your local game store. All right, so what is Is It Blitz? The deck has a two card win condition and its goal is to resolve either Kiln Fiend or Nivik Cyclops and then use a Teamer Battle Rage to swing in for what is ideally a double strike of lethal damage. How does this work? Well, Kiln Fiend and Cyclops are very similar. For the Fiend, one and a red gets you a one two elemental that reads, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Kiln Fiend gets plus three plus zero until end of turn. The Cyclops costs one more, needing one and a red and a blue to resolve, but since it is a one four instead of a one two, that means we're out of the realm of bolt bait, and as such, Cyclops is my preferred of the two. Cyclops is a defender, but whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Nivik Cyclops gets plus three plus zero until end of turn, and can attack this turn as though it didn't have defender. Teamer Battle Rage is an instant that costs one and a red for target creature gains double strike until end of turn. This of course means it deals both first strike damage and regular combat damage for a double whammy. The card also has Ferocious. That creature also gains trample until end of turn if you control a creature with power four or greater. Ferocious will always trigger here, and that trample means blocking is highly unsuccessful against our overwhelming force. But just what makes this so overwhelming? In addition to the trample, in addition to the double strike, the multitude of instants and sorceries we cast will pump our attacker up. And these instants and sorceries can be divided into two key groups, dig spells and protection spells. While sometimes you'll have an opening hand with either Cyclops or Fiend and Team or Battle Rage, this is unlikely, and oftentimes the game is really about you just digging for your answers, and of course ways to protect those answers. Let's start with dig spells. Remember, sometimes you'll be casting these off, triggering a resolved Cyclops or Fiend, and then successfully grabbing Battle Rage to cast and swing for the win. The deck runs a playset of Ponder, a spell so powerful it had to be banned in Modern. Ponder is a sorcery that, for a single blue mana, lets you look at the top three cards of your library, then put them back in any order. You may then choose to shuffle your library, and then draw a card. And if that's not enough, shuffle or no, you then draw a card. Add to this another banned blue spell in Modern, a full play set of Preordain is also run. Similar to Ponder, Preordain lets us spend a single blue mana to scry two, then draw a card. Scrying, of course, means we look at the top two cards of our library, then put any number of them on the bottom of our library, and the rest on top in any order. Both these spells are great. Not only does casting them trigger Cyclops and Fiend, but they let us dig through our deck for the card we are looking for, and even flush away cards that we'd rather not draw. But the best is that the deck runs both Brainstorm and Evolving Wilds. Never mind Evolving Wilds serving as mana fixing to go grab an island when we need an island, and a mountain when we need a mountain, no! That's just icing on the cake, because with Evolving Wilds, we can use this to flush away dead cards for treasure in conjunction with, wait for it, Brainstorm. Brainstorm, a card that will never ever be printed into modern because it is just so powerful. In fact, this is even restricted in vintage, as it's an instant that for only one blue lets us draw through three cards, and then put two cards from our hand on top of our library in any order. By itself, this is very powerful, but when we have an Evolving Wild sitting on the board, we can place two unwanted or otherwise dead cards back on top of our library, then crack wilds to flush them away, and hopefully draw better things. Our final dig card is one so powerful that it is banned in Legacy, restricted in Vintage, and a card of such depth and complexity that an entire strategy book has been written about the deck that bears its namesake in Vintage. 
vintage. And while it is restricted and vintage yet again, Popper plays with it because we are not afraid to make use of real power. That card, of course, is Gush. Gush costs four and a blue to draw two cards, but you'll never pay that because it has the optional casting cost of just returning two islands to your hand instead of paying its mana cost. Tap out your islands, return two to your hand, cast Gush for free. If you haven't played a land that turn, drop one of those islands back down. It's win-win. Okay, so at this point you are thinking, great, I resolve Fiend, ponder into Preordain, and find my Battle Rage, swing in, just to die to removal. Well, that is what removal does, so let's talk protection. Always practice safe popper, kids. A single copy of Counterspell serves as a catch-all for anything our opponent attempts. More likely than not, we use this to stop their own win strategy, but it can save ours in a pinch. A hard counter stops whatever we need it to. We have added protection from a pair of Dispel, which will counter-target instant spell, meaning anything our opponent would want to cast during our turn is something we're going to say nope to. Next, we run Three Apostles Blessing, where at an instant speed, it can protect our creature from whatever color is trying to remove it. For one, and either a white, which we don't have, so we'll always be paying the Phyrexian mana, Apostles Blessing is an instant, which gives target creature we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. Respond to a Doom Blade or a Flame Slash with this, yes, but there's an added benefit as well. In the event our opponent has a giant force of blockers that we need to punch through, if those blockers all share a color, we can grant our Cyclops or Fiend protection from that color and then attack without our opponent being able to block. Great for being up against a horde of goblins or a couple of anglers. I love versatility like this. The deck also runs two mutagenic growth. An instant we can cast with no mana open because we again pay the Phyrexian toll of life. Plus two plus two can save our creature from a lightning bolt or a flame slash, but keep in mind that it also still triggers Cyclops or Fiend. So this card might as well be saying target creature gets plus five plus two. And since we are in red, a full play set of lightning bolt for our own removal or do direct damage, and yes, triggering our creatures when we do. By the way, these are genuine lightning bolts, people. They cost only one mana. Eat your heart out, standard players. The deck's mana base is pretty straightforward. Four mountains, eight islands, the previously mentioned playset of Evolving Wilds, and two swift water cliffs. Oh, wow, look at the cost of that mana base. Eat your heart out, uh, literally everyone in every other magic format. And we're playing with Brainstorm and Lightning Bolts here. Tell me again why you don't play Popper? What's our sideboard look like? Obviously, we have access to some neat spells in red and blue. And this is customizable to your meta, but some solid choices right now are three Pyroblast and three Hydroblast, letting us counter a blue or red spell or destroy a blue or red permanent, respectively. Two Relics of Progenitus to deal with great graveyard shenanigans, and two electricery in case we need to wipe away a bunch of tokens or other dorks. One echoing truth can significantly down our opponent who has spent a few turns resolving several of the same creature. Flame Slash hits what our lightning bolt misses. And finally, in the sideboard, one of my new favorite sideboard options, I never thought I'd live to see the day, but I love this card, Eldrazi Sky Spawner. For two and a blue, we get a 2-1 flyer where when it enters the battlefield, we create a 1-1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token that has sacrifice this creature. Add a colorless mana to your mana pool. The applications here are numerous. This card is turning into an all-star in a lot of formats. It's a great solution for edict and other sacrifice effects, defense against delvers, a bit of mana ramp when needed, and some games it actually is just an answer to attack in the sky. Popper is quickly gaining popper ularity. Ha 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 And magic online leagues are far from the only place to get games these days. Card Kingdom's Mox Boarding House Seattle location runs its rags to riches every month, but that's far from the only game store with successful popper events. So if you're interested in getting games in the best budget format, where the tier one deck of your choice is usually no more than 50 bucks, be sure to suggest popper to your local game store today. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you. Yeah.